the y and will add on to the x to a higher y value, a higher y offset for the x offset, the higher the x offset. We'll start by 0, 0, the higher y values, higher x values, it will be further down. Hello and welcome to the channel. I am really excited for this project. I think it's going to be really cool, hopefully. So what we're building is a game. We're building it in React. We're building it with a very special style. Let's jump into it by me showing you the assets that I have collected for the game. So this is what they look like. And as you can see, they all have like a perspective. It looks like you're watching it from above. So this style is called like an isometric view and hopefully the end result will appear almost to be like a 3D game even though it's all just like stacked images together. Let's try it out and see where we end up. So I'm now in a file called images.js which is just taking all those images that we just saw, mapping them to variables and then exporting those variables. And that will make it easier for me to use them later on. Okay, I am now in the constants.js file where we have two constants. One is the world size, which is 9. And that will be how many tiles do we have in a row in the x and y axis, which is 9. And also this tile aspect ratio will be how what's the width of a tile compared to the height of a tile which will be very useful later when we start calculating things. So this project was created with Create React App and then I have added some components here. So now I'm watching the app component and here we just added a headline and then a component called Frogger and that will be the outermost wrapper component of the game. If we go into the Frogger component we see that we have just a world component and in the world component, we have a component called the landscape. In the landscape component, we have nothing, but the plan was to add the tiles inside the landscape component. So I think a good place to start would be inside the tile component. And you see here, I just added an image. But uh, we should make this take some props to show the correct image and in the correct position to start with. Okay, let's build the tile component. So this will take some props. It will take the image source. It will take its X position, its Y position, its Z position. And for this image tag, let's add the source. We should probably have a class name on this. Tile. And for the X, Y, and Z, that should be inside the styling. It will be absolute position, so the left property would go from the X variable in percent. And it's the same with the Y variable, but here it's the top property, also in percent. And lastly, we have the Z index which will come from the Z variable. Missing the comma here. That seems like a good start. Let's look at the styling that we need to create the landscape. So we have the world class, which wraps all the tiles. And that has position relative, so the tiles should be absolutely positioned relative to this world uh, wrapper. And we need to set a height on the world wrapper as well, because it will, all the content will be absolutely positioned. We know that the width of a tile should be one ninth of the entire width because we're going to fit nine tiles in a row. Yeah, that's what we need to know for now. Okay, now let's start working on the landscape component, which is the component that will render out all the tiles. So first, in this one, we're going to need to import all the images for tiles. I think that should be all of them. We should also import our constants. Okay, lastly, let's import the tile component. There we go. I'm going to create an empty array called the tiles. Okay, now we should populate this tiles array. 
and we'll do that using a for loop. We'll start with i equal to the world size. And we'll loop for as long as i is greater than zero and we'll decrease i for every loop. And we should fill the array with nine of a string that represents what tile it is. So it will probably be something like this i equals to one. Uh, array dot fill with that. So I will just type this out real quick. Okay, this is what I ended up with. As you can see, I use grass for indexes 1, 6, and 9, road for 3 and 4, water on 7 and 8, and so on. Hopefully, this will generate a board that will be grass, road, grass water and then grass. The next thing we should do is to handle the rendering of these different tiles. And now here comes the hard part because now we have to calculate the y and x coordinates for every tile in percentage. So this will probably need some trial and error to get it right. At least we know that we're gonna map the tiles Turn the tile component. That's what we are gonna render. But well, of course, we have to figure out both the source x, y, and z before that. But since the tiles is not a flat array, it's an array of arrays. This is not actually a tile. This will be a row, and this row needs to be mapped. And inside here we actually have a tile. So in here is where we're gonna return the tile. So first we should create like an Y basis for the for the row. So let's figure out how far in percent do we need to go down from one tile to the next. This should always be the same. So I create a value variable here called y offset, which will be the world size, or rather 100% divided by 9, which is world size, times, now we need to figure out the aspect ratio of the tile. And I know that if we look at a tile here, the distance between the top and the side is like a third of the entire height. So I'm thinking that I should use my constant tiles aspect ratio. I probably need parentheses here. And the tile aspect ratio will give me corresponding height, probably divided by three. So now we have maybe a y offset that we can multiply by this index for the row. So each row will move down one tile as well. Now I should figure out the y base for the row. That would be index times the y offset. And then in here when I when I figure out the y value for the individual tile, it will be the y and will add on to the x to a higher y value, a higher y offset or the x offset higher the x offset. We start by 0, 0, the higher y values, higher x values, it will be further down. Maybe I should call this the y position, because I will need to do the same down here. So we'll add one of these y offset units for each y, and one y offset for each x. And the z is the easiest ones, because they just have to be increased, it's just the x, and we'll add some value to it. So we'll start from 100 and then 101, 102, 103, and so on. So to figure out the x base, we know that if we were to stack them, they will move to 50% of the tile. Like if one is here, the second one will start here. So they should move 50%. So we'll say we start from 50 
and you'll subtract half a tile for every y that we go down. So it'll be 100% divided by half of 9, which I would be able to take 18. I would get half a tile. So I have a starting position for the row. I don't think this will work. We'll have to start somewhere and see what happens. So we'll pass in x abs, y abs, and z, and the source. Yeah, we need to figure out what source to pass in for each tile, and that's not so hard. This is what we should need to get the right image for that tile. So I will add if statements for each type of tile. Okay, this is what I ended up with here. So matching the tile, setting the source, and then returning the tile. And I added the key here since it's a list. And it's usually not a good idea to use the indexes to create a key. But since this will only render once and not change, I think it should be okay. And also I added this React memo around the landscape because this should only render once and then never change. So that helps with that. Okay, so now we should see what we have so far. I found an error here, I should return this. Oof! Look at the board! It's not super far off actually, it looks... I can see that the, the Y offsets are a bit too little, but the X... The X offset looks correct, I think. So now let's figure out how we can increase the Y offset a bit. And also on this row number 3 it looks like something weird is going on. Okay, the board looks nice. So what I had to do was to add a constant to the Y offset because I couldn't in a nice way figure out how to calculate it. So I did trial and error, and this constant makes the game board look okay. And also, I did an exception for row number 2, multiply it by 1.25, so it will adjust it according to the other rows. So that's great, that concludes the first video in this Frogger game series. If you're interested in the coming parts and you do like the content, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching!